First of all, if you're looking for a tutorial on this effect, you should watch another video. I will be talking about the selective color tool and not the selective color effect. Both are called selective color for whatever reason, but this is something else entirely. First and foremost, let's start with the basics. The selective color tool lets you change the RGB mix of a color range or a selected color. You can think of this as the channel mixer on steroids. Let's familiarize ourselves with the interface. You will get a good idea about this tool and how it works once we formulate sentences of what we want to do. You need to ask yourself two questions. What and where. The individual sliders will answer the what and the groups, so to speak the selected colors, will answer the where. For example, if I want to introduce cyan into the shadows, what cyan and where in the shadows. So I will increase cyan in the shadows. Just like that. Don't be bothered by the labels of these sliders. Remember, cyan, magenta, yellow and black is just the opposite of RGB. So decreasing cyan is introducing red. Decreasing magenta is introducing green and decreasing yellow is introducing blue. Let's reset this and let's pretend I want to give this shot a golden hour wipe. I know that all of these colors right here in the light will live in the yellows. So I will target the yellows and this is the mostly the only thing I will care about. I start by decreasing the cyan a little bit to give it a red touch to warm it up a bit. Then I think I want to introduce a little bit of magenta. Yeah, something like this and definitely introduce some of the yellow tones. Yeah, something like this. I think we can go a little bit redder even. Okay, and I'm kind of overdoing this effect, so let's dial this back a little. Something like this. Let's have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. Okay, we are starting to get somewhere. Maybe, just maybe, let me target the greens and have a look at what happens there. I think I can introduce some cyan there to introduce a little bit of color contrast. Then I think I have to introduce a little bit of magenta to get these greens down a touch because the opposite of green is magenta. If I increase magenta, I will decrease the green in the greens. Let's have a look at the before and after now. This is before, this is after. Okay, it's kind of convincing. I think we have to Tone these yellows down a touch, maybe something like this. And I think I want to take care of these blue and cyan tones because they don't quite fit into the overall color scheme. So let's have a look at what we can do. Maybe introduce a little bit of, oh, this was too much, <laughs> a little bit of magenta into these blues. Yeah, and a little bit of cyan still and introduce the black a little bit to make it a little bit heavier. Maybe I can reduce yellow to give it more of a blue vibe. Okay, no, I have to increase yellow to counter the blue so we get a nice, a nice cyan tone here. Okay, let's have a look at the before and after. This is before and this is after. And just like that, we created a pretty convincing golden hour effect. I mean, it needs a little bit more work, doesn't it? But a pretty convincing golden hour effect in under two minutes. This leaves us with the question, what is the selective color tool for and when should you use it? Since its name is selective color, it can be considered a narrow adjustment. Narrow adjustments are adjustments that target one specific color or target specific colors in general. These narrow adjustments are typically done late in your grade. So if you are creating a look, for example, this would be one of the tools to consider because it's very, very powerful. However, I would encourage you to avoid these narrow adjustments too early in your grade. You might have to go back and forth over and over again adjusting individual parameters, which puts unnecessary strain onto your footage. And when you're working with weak footage or 8-bit footage, you might risk breaking it. After all, if you know this tool from Photoshop, you pretty much know what you're getting. But please keep in mind that video files aren't photographs. I know, I know, 10-bit files and 12-bit files are getting closer and closer, but video files just aren't as robust as photographs. So please, keep your adjustments delicate.